Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today it is time for a versus match. As requested down in those video comments. Can you do one of these videos? Yes, I can. So here we go. We've got three contestants in this match. Contestant number one. Automatic 1111's implementation of textual inversion. No regularization images were used with this one because it only creates an embeddings file. This needs around 8 gig or more of VRAM. It's between 8,000 and 12,000 steps for each of these models, with the 12,000 steps taking around 80 minutes to completion. The file sizes are between 4 and 50 kilobytes, with 2 to 16 vectors per token. The smaller size is obviously the fewer number of vectors. Contender number 2 is Dreambooth SD Optimized, which is basically an unfrozen version of textual inversion. This one needs the full 24. 4 gigabytes of VRAM. This was trained with a photo of a KJ thing, and the thing was the class keyring. Using the default 800 steps, this took around 18 minutes to train and produced a file size of just 2 gig, and that's pruned down. And the final contestant is diff. Fuser's Dream Booth by Shivam. This had prior preservation as well, using FP16. This can use as little as 10 gig of VRAM, but it is Linux only, thanks to the power of Xformers. Once again, I used photo of a QJ keyring. The default was also 800 steps, but this took a mere 9 minutes to finish training, and also produced a 2 gig file. Okay, so let's dive into this, have a look at these different images and see what they produce. So, the first one that we're looking at is the textual inversion from Automatic 1111. Here we have a photo of an owl keyring with one token. Those are the images produced. They look pretty interesting and, and, and fairly close, just to give you an example of what it should look like. There is the actual owl. Okay, so that's one token. I also did a two token version. Let's have a look at the two token version. How good is this? Here we are testing for accuracy. This is test number one. How accurate are these photos? And as you can see there, we've got not particularly good, but that one is astonishing. Didn't it do well? That was almost exactly like the input picture, but that one not so much. Bit of a herky face on that one. How about four tokens? Let's have a look at four tokens, shall we? Is this any better or is it not? Well, it's curiously enough not. It. This is, I mean, that's quite close, but it, it, yeah, yeah, not, not so keen on that one. But how about 16 tokens? Surely. This will beat one, two, and four tokens in accuracy. The accuracy test says, sort of, sort of. It's a little bit eggy. I did notice it doing that during training. That one's quite close. That one's not bad. And that one is very good. Okay, so eh, not too bad on the accuracy test. Let's try the other one here. So now I need to switch checkpoints. So I'm going to be using the Dream Booth Stable Diffusion Optimized Checkpoint. Let's go over to Settings. And we'll change this to uh, the uh, SD optimized one. There we go. OK, let's load that up, pop over there. And now, of course, I need to change the prompt ever so, ever so slightly because I'm not actually using those embeddings. So here we have photo of a QJ keyring. That's what I trained both of these on. So how accurate is this? This is the SD optimized. Will it give us some good pictures? Is it better than textual inversion? Goodness me, look at the accuracy on that. That is almost a perfect representation of that little owl keyring. Absolutely astonishing. And let's also have a look at the QJ keyring diffusers version. There's no way the diffusers version can beat this. Is there? Is there? Let's have a look. Let's run exactly the same prompt with all exactly the same settings and see how it goes. Oh, yes. Yes, it can. Look at those images. Look at those images. Those are almost pixel perfect representations as well. 
didn't they do fantastically well in the accuracy representation test okay let's have a look at test number two number two how well can i style these images so let's pop these in and this is going to be made of yarn so we're trying to take the same thing and we're trying to make it out of yarn now this is the automatic 1111 textual inversion one token can can we make some yarn things Mm, not not really not really i mean they do look very good but that's because i've forgotten to change the model yes another thing you can do is actually use the embedding files on your other uh, dream booth models so that's that's another thing that you can do that's an advantage of textual inversion in that it, it stacks it kind of stacks. <laughs> it's, it's strange. The embeddings, the, the vectors do seem to go in the same direction as the original one. So anyway, here it is on the model it was actually trained on. And uh, no, 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 sorry. Those, those are not made of yarn, are they? They are not made of yarn. How about if we try with two tokens? Surely two tokens will be good. And let's have a look over here. We can see those images generated um okay i mean they're they're fairly accurate representations of the original owl but i would rather like it to be made of yarn mm, okay all right let's try with four tokens yes four tokens surely this is going to be a oh okay we've we've got yeah they, they look a little bit like bat owl all right let's have a look at 16 tokens so here we have basically examples of the more tokens you use the less editable the thing becomes and and there we have uh, yeah that's just kind of more like the original and that's just a little bit weird but i have already shown you the trick that you can do with this and that is through prompt editing so if we pop that in there and then here we're using an owl keyring to start with and then the owl keyring token but only at half power and then if we do that and let's have a look at the prompts this time then you should hopefully see, oh, there we go. There we go. That is much, much better, isn't it? There they go. They're actually now made of yarn. So because these embeddings are so powerful, you have to reduce the strength of them and they do come out a little bit better. Obviously, you can do the prompt editing with any of these models. So let's have a look at the next one. So now we need to change to the stable diffusion optimized model again. Pop over here stable diffusion optimized there we go we'll have that one we'll load that model pop over to text to image and we're going to change the prompt again because obviously we're not using those tokens so a photo of a qj keyring made of yarn with red and blue colors this is the stable diffusion optimized version of it let's have a look at this how good is this going to be well we will see in in just a second there we go there we go uh okay yeah it, it's got a, it's got a head made of yarn there i can i can definitely see some yarn that is not too bad that is not too bad at all okay so let's change to the diffusers version of it and run exactly the same prompt see what we get out there so that has loaded the diffusers model we will click generate and see how well will diffusers do what do you think place your bets please place your bets well goodness me hold on to your papers those are stunning aren't they aren't they absolutely fantastic those are actually owls fully and completely made of yarn i think we have a clear winner there and the final test the class representations now obviously the automatic 11 11 textual inversion doesn't change it at all so there's absolutely no point doing that test but we will do this test here and this is photo of a key ring so that is basically the class i'm using um, a random seed just to basically see what we get out here so this is the stable diffusion diffusers version of it and we're just doing the class so hopefully we'll get a variety of different key rings and let's see what comes out this time we have yes we have a variety of different key rings okay so that, that seems to be quite a good class and if we have the same sort of things here we'll switch over to the stable diffusion optimized one which is basically the unfrozen ti checkpoint and again we'll run exactly the same thing so let's have a look at this again we'll generate these uh random photo of a key ring so this is 
checking the class just without the owl in and this comes out as uh okay okay not quite as varied there, there is a little bit of sort of similarity between some of those it's not quite as varied but uh it is still pretty good it is still pretty good so let's have a quick look at a summary of those so this is uh totally scientific of course and fully objective results the automatic 11 11 implementation of textual inversion i would give an accuracy of five so if you're trying to make something exactly like your training data then it's it's close it's fairly close editability well you can use the prompt editing but out of the box just without using the prompt editing it is fairly low training time of one obviously it took way way longer than any of the others at 80 plus minutes and of course class preservation doesn't matter because it doesn't change the model at all dream booth sd optimized accuracy i gave that a 10 it was exactly like the owl that i put in editability i give that a five i mean it's it's better than the textual inversion it did make the little yarn owl a little bit yarny but nowhere near as good as the dream booth diffusers version training time i give it a five because it was halfway in between it took twice as long as the diffusers version of dream booth and for class preservation i mean it seemed to preserve the class a little bit they were a bit samey but we'll give it a five we'll give it a five and the dream booth diffusers Accuracy, I gave it a nine. They weren't quite perfect, but they did look very good indeed. Editability, give that a seven. Seems pretty fantastic to me with the yarn. Training time, an obvious 10 in at nine minutes. It was the fastest of all of them. And class preservation, I give that a five as well because they did look quite good, but eh, maybe I'll give that a six for the class preservation. But you know, your, your performance may vary. Now, some little notes of this. Both Dream Booth models, I thought, seem to be a little bit overtrained. I could probably get away with 500 steps or less. Dream Booth SD Optimize does give you images along the way, so you can actually get a better idea of how training is going. I looked at the training at around step 400. It did actually look very much like the owl. And of course, overall, the Dream Booth Diffusers version seems to be the best, especially given its super fast training time. So even if you make mistakes with that, you can just do it again, and nine minutes isn't really very long at all, is it? Okay, so there we go. That's the end of this video, but there are some more links after this that you can click on.